Habari, friends. Habari. How how is everyone doing? I pray that you have been blessed by the presentations that I've been sharing, and that um, the spirit of spirit of Christ has um, helped you in some way um, to um, understand more about homeschooling. So as as we begin um, our session, we'll ag again start with um, the first two, two stanzas of hymn number 316, Live Out Thy Life Within Me, and then towards the end, we'll end with the last two stanzas. So I'll ask um, the chorister if she can um, lead out, please. Let us now um, seek the Lord in prayer. Dear most gracious loving Father, we come to you once more thanking you first for all that you have done for us to allow us to wake us, to wake us up in our sound mind and to come together uh, knowing that uh, you are our Father, and that you will, that you could supply all our needs. We thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy towards us throughout this week, throughout this camp meeting. And Lord, we have shared so much so far. But yet, we ask for your Holy Spirit to bring clarity to our mind in the things that we have heard so that we could apply them into our homes. We thank you so much for all that you have done. And Lord, as we continue through this session on part two of looking at the struggles of homeschooling, Lord, we know that we can triumph because you are in control. And we thank you and so we thank you that, that we can follow your heavenly plan in teaching our children the way they should go. And when they grow up, they will not depart from it. Help us to teach our children to follow Jesus. In, G in Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs> to part two of homeschooled struggles. As I said yesterday, you're not alone. 
And again, I repeat and to say that you are not alone in these struggles because I have been going through these, these struggles and it's not to say that um, I will never stop going through these struggles because it's part of our, our human nature to go through this. And, but knowing that Christ led, the, the Father sent his son to lead the way for us, we can triumph through his name, in his name. Now, I don't know if you are familiar with this poem. It's a poem by Dorothy Law Nolte. Um, and the title of the poem is, is entitled, Children Learn What They Live. If children live with criticism, they learn to condemn. If children live with hostility, they learn to fight. If children live with, with ridicule, they learn to be shy. If children live with shame, they learn to feel guilty. If children live with, with encouragement, they learn, to feel, they learn confidence in themselves. If children live with tolerance, they learn to be patient. If children live with praise, they learn to appreciate. If children live with, with acceptance, they learn to love. If children live with approval, they learn to like themselves. If children live with, with honesty, they learn truthfulness. If children live with security, they learn to have faith in themselves and others. And mostly, I'm going to add, in Jesus. If children live with friend, friendliness, they learn the world is a nice place in which they live. In a way, it is. But because sin has entered into the world, we can, as parents and educators, in our homeschool, make it into a safe and secure place for them in learning. And one of, one of the struggles that I would like to um, mention is sometimes it can be very hard in finding a curriculum to use. Um, I have put together um, a list of just a few um, homeschool curriculums that I have um, been introduced. Um, it's not to say that all of them are great, but you can find, find, um, you can find good in almost any of the curriculums. And so it really depends on you and what you would like to choose. Um, Sunlight Education Ministry Curriculum is a Seventh-day Adventist curriculum. And here is the website that you're welcome to copy down. And um, it's uh, sunlighteducation.com. The next one is Rod and Staff. And it's the, the, the website is um, www.milestonebooks.com. And it's from the Rod and Staff curriculum. And it goes from grades uh, preschool, three to four, to grade 10. Another um, homeschool curriculum website is through the more morehomeschooling.com. Another one is um, Christian Light Education. Now, the, the, the Sunlight is the only Seventh-day Adventist <coughs> curriculum that I've mentioned. The others are not. But you can find good in, in these that I'm also mentioned as well. Now, a question was brought to me um, early this morning um, in how I set up my son's schedule. Now, for presentation, this was very challenging to do, but praise God, I believe it came out well enough that I can share it with you. Um, I took, what I did was I took a, 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 I go by the calendar, and for my, for, I do it monthly instead of yearly um, because I don't want to overwhelm my son um, in his learning. And so 
my goal is to try to try to um, to um, uh, get him to master in what I'm giving him to learn. And so what we're learning is a family Bible lesson on the story of Rebecca and Abraham. And this is found in the Sunlight Education, year one, quarter two. And we are learning in nature. Um, let me just say a silent prayer. And so um, uh, our nature study is on insects. And we are um, using um, the opportunity to learn different insects uh, throughout the week. We, be, we started out with um, butterfly, and then we looked at moth. And I went to the library and found some books on insects, on, on, on the butterfly and the moth. And I did a compare and contrast in what the butterfly looks like, the cycle of the butterfly and the cycle of the moth and um, use my wall to create a nature wall so that he can see as we're reading about the butterfly and reading about the moth, we are comparing and contrasting what both insects have in common and what are their different differences. And trying to tie it in, in, in the story of Rebecca and the, the relationship that, that Rebecca and Abraham had and, um, and in relation to the story of, of Abraham finding um, a wife for his son. And so, um, in tying it in also with the character quality, which is on courtesy, we see that, that she, was, she, she had courtesy towards, towards Abraham and, and um, uh, Eliza by, by, um, by um, uh, providing um, drink for his camels. Uh, and so she had courtesy towards him, and which, which found, found her to be favor in his sight. And, and so um, in tying it in to our character building, um, is um, seeing how we, we as children can be courtesy, can, can show courtesy. And so when children, um, children can learn courtesy by being obedient to God, being obedient to, um, to, to their parents and by showing respect. And so in tying in the character qualities, you also giving them um, what it means to have these, these, these character qualities. And so, um, and then for math, what we're working on is carrying. Uh, Abraham and Rebecca, the, he, the Lord was able to carry them through. And so in math, um, using the word carry, in, um, in learning how to carry, carry with double digits. And so you can take a word that um, comes out in this Bible story and tie it into nature, tie it into the character quality, tie it into any subject that you would like to, to, um, to study. And, and that could be your unit, your unit lesson for the month. This is um, what the family Bible lesson uh, looks like, the, the table of contents. Um, as you can see, um, we're still working on Rebecca, the story of Rebecca, and the character qualities on courtesy. The nature study is on what is an insect. And so um, this could be your yearly, your yearly lesson plan for um, for the, the um, family Bible lesson. And it goes by year, years and quarters. 
and just take your time through it. Um, no need to rush because we want to be sure that our, our children are learning what we're teaching and so that they could also apply, apply by using their five senses in, in all these areas. As I shared with you um, during my first uh, presentation, um, my son was diagnosed with autism, and so it was very hard for me to put him on a schedule that he can understand and work independently. And so what I was able to do, um, I was fortunate to find this whiteboard, um, at a, at a local uh, thrift store and um, a secondhand store. And so what I did was I took a loose paper, just wrote out his schedule, uh, um, tear it, uh, cut it in strips, and then laminated it so that he can see um, by using Velcro to stick it up on the board to know that, that um, what to do first and then what to do next so, so, that, so that he can know what to do for the day. I, what I also did too was um, if you don't have, if you're not able to get a whiteboard, um, you can use um, a notebook and that could be your, your child's schedule book. And so this is um, uh, our outline uh, for the day. And then in the afternoon, um, after our supper, we do a little bit more before family worship, and that is writing, cursive writing. In the United States, um, there's a book on Amazon that parents who live in, in the United States can use as a form of a supplementary additional work to apply into their homeschool. And, um, in most states, um, uh, there's, there's a, um, by law, uh, people who choose to homeschool in the United States, there's, like for me in Florida, I have to have my son evaluated. Now, I, it has been six years since I've been homeschooling him, and so when I, when I take him to his evaluator to check to see what he, what he has been learning through, through school, then um, this is what I am now using. And um, this is a, a, a picture that I took of just the first page of, um, of um, the fourth, he's, he's in fourth grade. And so this is what I am using as a guide for supplementary additional work for him and so what we're working on is as you see on the very top I don't know if people are in the back are able to see but um, but what we're working on um, just so that he can master it is learning how to write his first name in cursive writing and so I'm seeing improvement in that and um, and once I once I see him mastering that then I'll move on to writing his last name. I decided to, to put this quote from um, the testimonies of the church, uh, volume seven, page 278. And I want us, and I want you to read it together as, as I share, as I um, click on the slides. So can everybody see it? Yes. Okay, I want you to, to begin to read. Amen. Amen. So this is what, what I share with my son and my daughter in the afternoon, even though I have her in the public school 
and I want her to um, to come home um, and do when she comes home and 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 she, I want her to do something in uh, along with her brother. This is what I tell my children every single day that that in spite of their difficulty, they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. And so if we instill that in our children um, in a kind and loving way, then they will see us, they will be able to see Jesus in us and not be, um, feel that, they're, that, that their difficulties are in vain and that they cannot, cannot be able to um, achieve through Christ. Another, another struggle um, that I have, have um, experienced, and I believe many um, parents who choose to homeschool, is to find that support team. It's very hard um, to have, connect with like-minded people. Um, and so um, we, that's where prayer, consistent prayer comes in. And um, when we are going through our daily, daily uh, activities, whether going, um, well, for me, going to the supermarket or going to the laundromat or, or, or anything for that matter, I try to seek and find other um, uh, locations where people are, um, I would, when I'm at the library, I would, uh, would inquire if there's any support groups, any family, families that are homeschooling. Um, there are a lot of support groups on Facebook that I've come to experience. Um, with technology running as it is now, it's, it would be a good thing to, um, to find out who in your area are, are in Facebook who are using Facebook and in groups. And if you can, in the meantime, while using that, find families that are also homeschooling so that you can establish that support team. Um, you can do it offline and you, you can do it online and you can do it offline. So I'm not sure of the geographical location where you are, where you all live, um, but to work together to establish that support team is so important, so important because um, it will also break the controversial issue on social, socialization, which I've shared yesterday that, um, that, that children that are homeschooling can, can achieve through socialization with other parents more so outside the public school. Another thing you can do is to do a co-op, which means by meeting up with other homeschool families to help take turns teaching a certain subject, like sewing, cooking, cleaning, helping, helping the elderly, uh, medical missionary work, which is uh, excellent work to do. Um, given, learning how to give a Bible study, uh, witnessing, building a house or a church, healthcare, agriculture. Uh, these are some activities that can help build up character and also socialization. So we need to keep in mind a focus in our frontal lobe that as we're going through these activities and building character, that we t as, come, uh, as we come together, we can work as a team. And that's the goal is to work as a team. Another struggle that I have, have come across is um, finding activities to do on the Sabbath. Uh, we go through the week with our daily um, activities, but yet when, it come, when, it, when the Sabbath come, um, our mind is swayed away thinking of something else, and we're not really keeping the Sabbath when, our, when we allow the enemy to to enter and, um, and sway, uh, sway us away from really keeping the Sabbath holy. And so um, 
I listed some activities that, that we can do um, in keeping the Sabbath holy. And that is one, to go and sing, sing to the elderly in the nursing home. That's mostly done here in the, in the United States. And um, that could be also done where you are. Go to um, a, an elderly home. Um, a, a member of the church who no longer comes to church. You can vis have, the, have the young people visit, visit that person because um, it will really do that person um, some good uh, to relieve any depression or loneliness, to see someone who actually cares. And, um, and that will definitely benefit, I think, to a young person. I know for me, personally, it has um, in singing in nursing homes, uh, greeting elderly. Um, you can take nature hikes, have a picnic, um, have a small church with homeschool families um, meeting up together to do certain activities. Um, in Philippians 4, 8, it says, Finally, brothers, whatsoever is true, what's, whatsoever is honorable, what, whatsoever is just, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. And I also included here in visiting the elderly that you can um, uh, maybe during the week plan um, uh, maybe for Friday, uh, preparation day, uh, you can set a special Sabbath where you can, where the as a family, um, visit an elderly by bringing a special meal. If the, pers if the person is not able to come to church, to fellowship, then bring the fellowship to them. And, and they, they could, they could feel, feel that they are important, that they're special, and they're not excluded in any family church-oriented um, activities. Have the young people sing to the elderly medical missionary work. Um, there is a website um, that also have ideas that you can look into, and it's um, in www.sabbathideas.org. This is currently what I am going through um, in learning about medical mission, missionary work. I'm currently um, um, if you're familiar with Demario Carter and his ministry with Council on Prophecy, um, he is currently doing online a medical missionary training. And so I took a picture of these quotes, which I find to be so true. Um, when we are learning how to witness to others and to find that opportunity, even on the Sabbath, because Sabbath, um, Jesus healed on the Sabbath. The church uh, is supposed to be a hospital. And sometimes during the week, it's, we're not able to, to meet or greet our loved ones. But um, with Jesus, the Sabbath was, was a special time that he can have so many people gather to witness, witness his, his miracle in healing, healing the, the sick. And so in medical, mission, uh, medical ministry, uh, page 320, it says that in every place the sick may be found, and those who go forth as workers for Christ should be true health reformers, prepared to give those who are sick the simple treatments that will relieve them and then pray with them. Thus, they will open the door for the entrance of the truth. The, the, the doing of this work will be followed by good results. Let our, our ministers who have gained, who have gained, gained, gained an experience, who have gained an experience in preaching the word, word learn how to, uh, learn how to give, give um, simple treatments, and then go forth as medical missionary evangelists. 
workers, uh, gospel medical missionary are needed now. And medical missionary work breathes the breath of life into the dead church. Uh, in uh, the testimonies to ministers and gospel workers, page 415 says, Com combine the medical missionary work with the proclamation of the third angel's message. Make regular, organized effect to um, make regular, organized effort to lift the churches out of the local dead level unto which they have fallen and have remained for years. Send into the churches workers who will set the principles of health reform in their connection with the third angel's message before every family and individual. Encourage all to take a part in work for their fellow men and see if the breath of life will not quickly return to these churches. The Lord will give you success in this work for the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. When it is interwoven with the practical life, when it is lived and practiced, the union of Christ-like work for the body and Christ-like work for the soul is a true interpretation of the gospel. Um, an appeal for the Medical Missionary College, page uh, 14 and 15. And lastly, I think this is my last, nope, I'm almost, near to done, being finished here. Um, the medical missionary work is the right hand of the gospel. It is necessary to, to advancement of the cause of God, as through it men and women are led to see the importance of right habits of living. The saving power of the truth will be made known. Testimonies to the Church, Church Volume 7, page 59. The medical missionary work work is is to be connected with the third angel's message as as the hand is connected with the body councils on health page 557 true 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 victory is gained only when the repentant sinner pledges himself to unconditional obedience to God. Only when he pledges himself to honor God in every word, every business transaction, every act of his life. Those who do this may be like the youth whom John addressed in the words, I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. It is possible for every youth to gain spiritual truth. Uh, just a minute here. Um, sorry, trying to move my screen down so that I can see. Those, those who endeavor to increase their strength will pass through severe struggles, which will, which will uh, test their serenity, uh, their sincer sincerity of purpose. But by remaining faithful, they prove, they prove that their determination to God's will is prompted by high and holy motives. In every sense of the word, such youth are able to be overcomers. For Christ overcame in their behalf, having overcome, they are brought into alliance with the with divine unfailing resources. And this is found in uh, Youth Instructor, January 17, uh, 1911, paragraph six. And so I think that was the end of my last slide. And so um, you can see that as uh, we go through the struggles, we can be overcomers through Christ. So um, let's turn to uh, the, the last two um, stanzas of 316. And then if there's any questions, um, then I will, um, I could address them or we can address them later for next time we meet. 
Uh, so let's continue with our, our next um, stanzas and then we can close off in prayer if there's, an, if there's no questions. And so, loving Father, as we end this session, we come to you once more, thanking you for your goodness. We, we pray, dear Father, that what we have heard, that we will, um, uh, that we will, will uh, apply it to our, our lives. And we ask that you will continue to guide us uh, through this journey. Lord, we thank you so much that we are not alone because your son have gone through this and he, ha and he overcame through his journey. Uh, he was homeschooled. And so he overcame through, these strugg through the struggles that he, he had. And Lord, I know that you, that we can over, be overcomers through our struggles. And so we, we ask that you will continue to guide us and protect us, our thoughts, guard our thoughts. And um, we know that everything will come together because we do love you. May let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen.